All right. Thank you for joining me. This is Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green. That's how the title works. And if you've been digging these interviews I'm putting up, you got to make sure that you subscribe. We definitely need people to subscribe. Now, we got a really cool show today, and we're going to be talking about the Dio album, Lock Up the Wolves, almost 31 years later. And we got the two best people to talk to the record about, Simon Wright and Rowan Robertson. And we're going to get to that right after this. All right, we're going to get in the time machine and we're going to go back to 1990, probably even 89. But let's welcome, we got Rowan Robertson right there. And we got Simon Wright right there. And now I'm going to figure out how to get us all on. Oh, there we are. Look at that. Hey. All hey. Right. This is a big reunion for you guys. Yeah. It's been, must have been like, oh, when was the last time I saw you then, Si? Oh, I think that was in, was it in Vegas at the, what's that club there, Vamped? Oh, was that the last um, show? Did you get, last time you saw each other? Uh, was it Vamped? Oh, that must have been a while back. Yeah, I can't remember. We I did a... I think we it did. was. Could be wrong. Oh, yeah. Well, we did that. We played together, didn't we? Yeah. We did a, yeah, we had Jizzy, we had Jizzy Pearl sing, and we did a, 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 a Lock of the Wolves kind of night. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, you, you were, and before that, I think you came in, Rowan, and you, you helped us out with Disciples because Craig couldn't make that show. That's right. Yeah. Was it in like Corona or something? Yeah, it was the M M32 club or something, was it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was great playing those songs again. I mean, we did like Lock Up the Wolves and um, I think we just did that one track, didn't we, that, that night? Uh, yeah, pr probably just the one. If, if I don't even remember. Did we do one off Lock Up the Wolves? I can't remember. You did Wild One in Vegas. Yeah. I am, no, I didn't play that. I haven't played Wild yeah. One in 30 years. I'm going to send so, well, you a video. Did, we did play it. We did play it because there's a guy at the front and he goes, oh, well, kind of sounded like it used to. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, we did. You, you did. you did it, Simon. I'm going to send you the video later. You're going to relive it. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, so we're going to start in the beginning. Rowan, we're going to start with you and then we'll, we're going to go all the way up to, through the, through the history of things. So, my first question, Rowan, is how at your age, you know, you were 17 years old when you first saw Dio live at, at Castle Donington. Is that right? Um, saw him at Donington. Yeah, it was the first time I saw him. It was on Dream Evil 86. Yeah, I was probably actually like 16 when I saw that, probably. probably. So, I mean, this is... Oh, anyway, whatever. Yeah, you were young. So this is long before YouTube and, and things like that. You know, now kids are getting better at music every day. H how did you become such a good guitar player at such a young age? Um, good question. It is a good question. Um, Thank you. He doesn't even know. I used to practice with my tennis racket. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 I he, mean, he could even tune his tennis racket back then. I could. I could. <laughs> You know, I got to point out for the people watching, I was saying earlier that you guys have a lot in common. And one of those things is that, you know, Simon joined ACDC when he was 18 years old yeah. and uh, Rowan joined Dio at 18 years old. And of course, you're also both English. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, uh, I think it was a little easier for Rowan. I got to admit, I mean, I got thrown in right at the big deep end. I mean, Dio obviously is a is a, is a is a national act and stuff, but uh, it was um, there's a you know there was it was absolutely insane when I, what I when I first joined it was otherworldly you know um, in good ways and bad ways but um, yeah when Rowan first I met Rowan when we were rehearsing for the album Lock Up the Wolves and stuff and all and we all, we all got along great I mean it was. Um, well, we're gonna get there, Simon. We had, that, we had that punch up. We had that punch up. Do you remember? <laughs> you guys are jumping. At, you guys are jumping ahead. We Rowan's still sixteen in the audience. We didn't get there yet. Rowan, you got 
did you take tell me did you take guitar lessons what happened um oh well there was a there was a guitar knocking around the house and i picked it up and i got uh, lessons probably by like oh god I don't know um, 12 something like that like guitar lessons and I mean in those days you had to like you had to buy magazines and, and look you send off to America for tapes and all this sort of stuff so there wasn't many people doing it and you had to look for the information but you're very modest Rowan I, I looked at magazines and I'm terrible <laughs> uh, I I was looking at different right. magazines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. yeah, you're supposed to look at guitar magazines, Jason. Mm, that, that, yeah. Simon might have figured it out. I was looking at the wrong magazine. <laughs> oh, well. Well, okay, so Rowan's not going to give us an answer, but he, he oh, obviously well, sat in his room and, and practiced. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to play along with records, and I played all the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, Rowan, it wasn't just like you were just some kid who could, you know, play fast. You had feel in your playing. You, you I mean, there was a lot to it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I used to see like BB King on TV. I had like um, ZZ Top Records, Jimi Hendrix, Queen, Angus, of course, ACDC, um, you know, and I think to, to be brought up on that bluesy stuff was probably was a different foot than just being thrown in with the, you know, the shred. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you see Dio at Donington. It's not long after that that one of your friends convinces you to send a tape, right, to Dio. Yeah. Yeah, well, I wanted to. I was going to send it anyway. And then I was going to, I like basically said, oh, I'm not going to bother because what's the chances of getting it anyway? And he said to me, no, 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 you know, send it. What was on the tape? Um, I, I had a four-track cassette and I put the last in lines, song on track one and I soloed against it on track two and then I put a little bit of just soloing at the end just by myself afterwards I've lost everyone I can't see anyone now no no that's because we oh. put it that was a one shot just a view it was your close-up oh right oh god where's my makeup <laughs> so uh, <laughs> but so you you had heard that Dio was looking for a guitar player at that point oh yeah yeah okay so Craig Goldie leaves, you send your tape. The, the label tells you at the time, or management tells you at the time that, that they weren't interested right away, right? And then you try the fan club, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I sent the, I sent the tape to, was it Columbia Records at the time in London? And then I got the tape back with a, with a letter saying they weren't interested. So I sent it over to um, the Niji fan club, the Dio fan club, yeah. I mean, you hear these stories all the time, but it's amazing to hear one that works. Yeah, I know. It was amazing. It was like definitely like a fairy story. So, okay. So at this time, Dio still had the band. He had uh, Vinnie Appice on drums. He had Claude yeah. Schnell on keyboards, and he had Jimmy Bain on bass. Now, allegedly, they wanted Gary Hoey for the job before they even knew about you. And when you got involved... You obviously had the biggest uh, uh, endorser of all. You had Ronnie James Dio and Wendy Dio who wanted you in the band. How did they get you to audition? Well, um, Ronnie certainly did. I don't know that Wendy did. I think she thought I was a bit young. Okay, so, well, that's even a bigger endorsement. Um, and, yeah, that they Wendy called me up and said, you know, how would you feel playing in front of 20,000 people? And I was like, well, all right, I suppose, because I was cocky. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, she flew me out for an audition. With, and I came, you know, audition for audition with, with that line up in the alley in, in, um, in Lancashire. Of what did you have to Park. play? Uh, Lancashire, uh, in the valley, in the San Fernando. No, I know, where, I know where Lancashire is. I'm saying, what songs did you play oh, when you auditioned? Oh, you know, Last in Line, Stand Up and Shout, you know, Holy Diver. And so now they, they bring you back for a second audition, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you get the gig. Yeah. And, I, and actually, Larry Moran, the, the, you, you know Larry Moran? He, sure. he, uh, he was yeah. on his personal at the time, and he told me before they told me officially that I had the gig. Anyway, okay, yeah. so, so two, two auditions, and, and they told me I had it. Yeah. Okay. So now this is probably end of 89, because the record comes out in 90. Um, they hold a big announcement. This yeah, 89 was, flew to LA. No, no, this was the end of, yeah, 89, because we recorded it beginning of 90, yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so you you you're you're in the band. They hold the big announcement for you. You know, you're, they're really setting you up to be the next um, guitar hero, and obviously they have a lot of faith in you. Now, Those was fools. it? Say it again. <laughs> fools. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. But so. <laughs> What, was it difficult? Was it difficult joining these guys who were sort of already established? I mean, was it was it hard for you? No, nothing was hard. It was just no, it was just a breeze. All of it. So they tell you that you're going to write songs, which is you know. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's a good question actually, because I said to Ronnie at the beginning of rehearsals, I said, I said, look, I don't think I can do this. I don't know if I can write songs, and he goes. Trust me, you'll be fine. <laughs> That's me again. Yeah. Yeah. He 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 just gave me confidence and he said, No, trust me, you're gonna be fine. You can do this. So I said, All right. So the so the way that Ronnie James Dio writes songs, from what I hear, is that he comes in with the melody and the lyrics. But so what is that like? Tell me how he presents a song. Well, I don't remember that he wrote that way. I mean, Simon's a good one to ask for this. I mean, Simon did many more. Mm -hmm. years with Ronnie than I did. I only did the one album, but I remember it that he would uh, find a, a riff from the guitar player or another member, sometimes even himself, and then we'd jam it up. Sometimes he'd bring in a title and then he'd put melodies and then he'd start putting the whole songs together from the beginning at that point. Yeah, it, it, you, most 90% of the time it came from the guitar riff. And then he would out. It would create on top of that, wouldn't it? You know. Yeah, that's how I remember it too. Because yeah. some of the guys sort of took issue, I think maybe with over publishing that Ronnie would say that he created the song and that the guitar was not as much of a, you know, that, that you know, you know, what I'm saying there was some issues over how he came up with songs. Right. But you have a co-writing credit on every song on this album. Yeah, as Simon says, that's how I remember it. To, he would say, right, what riffs do you got? No, no, no. Okay, what's that? And then you jam it up in the room. Find, and then he'd say, right, okay, let's find another part to go with it. Any ideas to go with it? Another part. And then you sort of put it together slowly like that. That's how I remember. Okay. So, uh, so now we're, we're going to get towards when Simon comes in. So from what I hear is that Jimmy Bain was fired. I don't know if you know that or not or want to comment. Yeah, I was I was sort of like pretty much unaware of a lot of the polit politics that were going along. I was mm -hmm. just sort of <coughs> the other guys end up <clears throat> leaving. So yeah, um, I think Vinny, uh, uh, Jimmy, and Claude were left at the same time, but I'm not sure the exact circumstances. Vinny was 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 two uh, two weeks before we recorded the album. Okay, so. Simon's playing with ACDC. Simon, you leave ACDC knowing you're joining Dio. And you've told me before, you know, you no, were no, looking no. for something else. I didn't know I was going to join Dio. After oh, I you just left? Yeah, yeah. I was floating around. Not for too long, though. That was the, that was the, 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 the great thing. But, um, you know, when it all ended with DC, I, didn't, I wasn't moving straight to, to, to join up with Ronnie. So you took a big chance. When I joined up with Ronnie, it, there was, you know, there was no Jimmy, there was no Claude. It was all a brand new band, you know, so, uh, and and with Rowan and stuff. So, and the other guys, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, Jens is a bit, is older than Rowan and, um, he, he was older than Rowan and Teddy Cook, but he, he really had a young kind of attitude about him. So I think that, really sort of helped. So Jens Johansson, for those who don't know, he was the keyboard player. He also played with Ingve Malmsteen. But so he was your keyboard player. And Teddy Cook uh, was the bass player at the time who came in. Yeah, yeah, from, from uh, back east, yeah. And um, it, it was a kind of a young band. You know, it, uh, you know, I mean, I was still kind of youngish. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. you know... <laughs> But it all, it all seemed to work. We all seemed to get along, and it was all a re very relaxed atmosphere and a very, very I remember, creative I mean, atmosphere. I remember one time, I don't know if you remember this, Simon. <laughs> Probably, maybe not. <laughs> we were on the tour bus, 
<laughs> and you had your you had your hand over the uh the wing mirror and you were taking a piss <laughs> was it well it was moving oh no no it wasn't moving we were parked you know we were parked <laughs> yeah then, well stranger things have happened mate <laughs> look at these young guys and then and then you came on the bus right yeah yeah and you strangled me like this. did i <laughs> and you go you go like this we're fucking heavy metal <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was brilliant it was a brilliant yeah. laugh of course well, it was all in fun it was awesome it, well there was a lot of that around wasn't there i mean yeah. it was like we were uh yeah. we, we 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 had to hold back with anything i mean it was a really fun time wasn't it you know yeah right? brilliant good laugh yeah. you know the only miserable one seemed to be teddy cook he seemed miserable all the time so he did seem miserable he, yeah and miserable. I, I don't know why i i i, I can well, he, actually, he actually i spoke to him about a couple of years ago and he said um he said oh my attitude's changed so much since then i really feel thankful for all that and everything yeah well i would hope so yeah i mean good god but uh yeah, he, he became a bit of a brunt of some pranks, didn't he? He did. He did. <laughs> well, you got to tell uh, us something. Oh, no. Not... Oh, that... Well, I remember, I remember. And I don't it, think... Jason. <laughs> Rowan's ready to spill it now. Okay, go ahead. Well, it's, not, it's nothing to spill, really, but I don't think he'd mind. But, no. but his first mention in one of the local newspapers or one of the New York newspapers, they they... Sorry, Teddy, if you're listening, but <laughs> they put his name as Toby Cook. Toby. Toby. So <laughs> Ronnie called Wendy and said, said, give Teddy a call and tell him that because his name has been printed as Toby, we're going to change it to Toby. We'd like to change his name. Amazing. <laughs> so, the phone call. Call, so the phone call comes, Teddy walks out the room, and then puts the phone down, and we hear him come back in. He's like kicking the walls and like kicking chairs and stuff. And he was really upset about it. <clears throat> yeah, he's a very, um, um, I don't know. Well, if you say, if he's told you his attitude's changed, I think it's probably for the better. Yeah. yeah. Took himself a little bit too seriously at times, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He went yeah, on and well, played with Gray White, uh, I think, for a little yeah. while. But then I, no, no one heard from him since, I don't think. So. No, I think he started running a shoe shop, didn't he, or something? That's so Spinal Tap, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was a haberdasher. Yeah. Can <laughs> I show you something in a pump? <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, God bless yeah. you. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's around on, on social media. I did speak to him on Facebook, I think it was. Yeah, cool. I haven't spoke to him in years. Good God. So, yeah. so the record was recorded in Reno, right? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me how that comes about. Um, well, I think they were looking at that studio, Granny's House in Nevada, and they were looking at another one in New York or something. I, I don't know how Ronnie decided on that one. So what's yeah, I know, actually, uh, David Coverdale told him about it because David Coverdale recorded 19... The, one, the album with Steve Vai, they did it there. Slip of the Tongue. So then he said, Ronnie, oh, I found this great studio or whatever. That's, I just, because I know there's an engineer here in town, Bjorn. He worked at, he worked at that studio. He lives in town here in Vegas. Anyway, that's how I found out. So, okay. So what's the experience like? Where are you guys staying out in Reno? Oh, it was yeah. all in the house. Yeah, okay, yeah so you guys were, I was staying at the pepper mill. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. Getting massages stuff you know yeah <laughs> he had acdc cloud at that point he didn't have to hang out with you guys yeah i could just float in and float out whenever i wanted it was great <laughs> now did you record the drums first uh yeah pretty much yeah and we had to remember you finished and then we had to set them up and you came back in for a song yeah because the engineer that we were using was um Oh, is it Mike Platt? Tony Mike Platt. Tony, you're right. That's it. And we weren't sure 
I mean, me and Ronnie sort of talked a little bit about the drum sound and what we were looking for and stuff, but it it just and having not used that studio before either, uh, the drum sound came out really flat. We did like two three songs and it was really dry, really flat, and he Ronnie came in straight away and went, "That's not going to work." Uh -huh. So we built up, remember we built up the riser and we put plywood on either side to brighten oh, up yeah. the whole kit. Yeah, I do. Uh, that worked a treat. And we changed around some snare drums too. Um, and, um, you know, then we fiddled around with, with, with uh, Teddy's tone a little bit. And uh, because it was basically, wasn't it? It was like a brand new band, wasn't it, for him? So he was, he was enjoying it. But uh, I think, it, you know, little little periods it got a bit frustrating with him and stuff like that but you know that's just the way it it goes but i think it worked out good because we'd only played together for about two weeks hadn't we before we recorded yeah because the studio we couldn't we couldn't um rehearse more or think about it anymore because the studio was booked and they couldn't move the studio remember oh that's all it was was it yeah so i had to come in and uh had about we did some rehearsals together and then I was at home, you know, learning it as well. And then all, yeah, about two weeks. And then we went bam straight into the studio. Yeah. Rowan, was Simon able to give you any advice considering he'd gone through something similar? Stay away from the strip clubs, mate. That was the first one. Cause no, he, he said, he said go to he's <laughs> like, sorry, sorry, where's the strip club? <laughs> he told me the best strip clubs to go to. <laughs> so, no, he didn't. No, I did. Um, you you're not old. You weren't even back back then. You weren't old enough to get in the. Place. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I got in some places, but didn't didn't get. Well, in you know, place. since yeah. we're saying it, I was wondering, Rowan, what about girls? You know, were they were there girls on the road at eighteen? Oh, he he loved what the girls. Yeah. What's that? You, you you loved the girls. They they thought the world of you, didn't they? Um, uh, I had a, I met a girl at the, um, do you remember the Delmar station? Yes, that was one of the places you could get into. We managed to get you in there. We had some brilliant nights there, didn't we? We had some crazy nights there. That's the first time at that little bar club we played Holy Diver together and there were all of us together. Right, remember? yeah. Remember. We, hadn't, we hadn't done any live shows. We just went straight into recording, didn't we? Right, yeah. Yeah. So. And um, that was, um, we were there a lot. Do you remember when the, all those Marines were in there that night? Yeah, that one night. They were yeah. shit-faced. Yeah, and yeah. They, they all, they all, they're like big Dio fans. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was a hell of a night. Yeah. A lot of shots yeah. going on. <laughs> Rowan, maybe it was that you were in such a metal band. It might have been a lot of, you know, more guy oriented. <laughs> you know, had you been... I was going to say it'd probably been better in Def Leppard than Dio, but yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I mean, as far as <laughs> I get what you mean, yeah, we meant a, big, a bigger lady audience, yeah, yeah. The girls, though, they were females there. Oh yeah, oh I yeah. Mean, I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm just what's that? No. What am I saying? Sorry, girls. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get yeah, no offense. For this. No, no offense, no. Honestly. No offense to the ladies who who like Dio, yeah. I mean, it's a oh, joke. Yeah, I'm only joking. We can oh. still joke, can't we? Or can we? I'm not sure. Say again. We can still joke, can't we? I mean, I think. Well, I'm not sure. Depends what the joke is. Well, I'll shut up then. We've all been canceled <laughs> a long time ago, so it doesn't matter. They can't get. They can't get us. But they know, uh, I'm, they know I'm joking. Let's talk about some of these songs. That'll be the safe thing to do. Here we go. Here's the track listing. You guys probably can't see that, but luckily yeah, I, I can. So let's talk about the first sing first track on the record, Wild One, which I believe is also the first video for MTV. What do you guys remember about this song? Um, well, well, one of the things I remember, and I'm sure it will jog Rowan's memory, is that, I mean, we, we got the backing track down pretty fast. It wasn't uh, – we didn't really – mess around with what had already been created i think we just went in and laid down what was there but but as we went along it, it ended up with like rowan and jens you know jens copying rowan's guitar solo and i was just amazed how he did that it was it's amazing wasn't it rowan jens is amazing yeah yeah you know 
and he, ma he makes it look so easy. <clears throat> oh, I'll try this, I'll try this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, well, I think, uh, do you remember when we took his keyboard up into his room and we put those speakers on top of Teddy's ceiling? No, I think I was over at the pepper mill when all that went down. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it, well, I don't know whose idea it was, but we took these giant speakers and put them on Teddy's <laughs> Teddy's ceiling of his room. <laughs> and then we, in the middle of the night, we took one of Jens's keyboards and made this sort of low bass rumble, this really loud low bass rumble in the middle of the night. <clears throat> And Poor Teddy. <laughs> basically, like the house was completely pitch black, and suddenly there's this giant rumble, like, <laughs> and, then, and then we see this flashlight come on, <laughs> <laughs> walking around the corridor, walking around the corridors with this flashlight, and then in the morning he's yeah. going, "Did you fucking go? Did you guys?" <laughs> <laughs> the fucking jumbo jet came through the house last night. It was like, well, <laughs> no wonder he was so cranky. He first he had to change his name to Toby, and then I know, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, so, uh, what about this music video? Where did you guys shoot this? Um, in Hollywood, wasn't it? I think it was in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like down by Melrose or something. Like there was this like this sound stage or something. I can't remember. Yeah, there used to be a church or something. Um, you know, like a, it had been turned into a... It was a church that had been turned into a club. Then the club had gone out of business and then they turned it into a soundstage or something. Could be wrong. But, uh, yeah, cool, cool. I think the video turned out. It was good putting... You know, skateboarding was a big thing back, you know, at that time. It was very, you know, in the, in the news and stuff and... So putting the skateboarder guy in there, I thought was a, you know, well, a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so this is like the first time, you know, Rowan, you're on MTV. Do you feel pressure? You know, people are trying to groom you to be a guitar hero. Are, are you... No, I was like, more the better. I was like, bring it on. <laughs> yeah, his mom called me and said, he's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Carry you know, on. one of the only ones. You know, Rowan doesn't have much fear, it seems, and maybe that's why you succeed. And Simon, the same goes for you with your career. I think you guys show that sometimes you've got to just get in there and take the chance, and, and what happens, happens. Am I, am I right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, if you get the chance, you better take it. You know, uh, you got to run with it, you know. And uh, I mean, I mean, Rowan is, you know, pretty fearless. I mean, there's a... When we when we got to do the stage show and stuff and all, there was um, it got we got a bit involved with Rowan's guitar solo in the, in the pyrotechnics of it and the theatrics and stuff, and we set up a whole bunch of uh, smoke bombs that go off at a certain part in his solo. We figured out, and he was running right along the front, and every time he'd point his finger, they'd be blowing up. And every it time, was amazing. Every time, yeah, every time I. <clears throat> Yeah, go to this side and then throw one at me and then... Yeah. Well, it <laughs> became, you know, even I noticed you, you, you just be, kind of kept, became more confident and stuff. Oh, you know, yeah. With how it all was, you know, because you keep doing it and you're doing it and you, you don't get used to it, but you just get more and more confident, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was all a laugh back then, wasn't it? It was all pretty relaxed and all. We were We all kind of... We we were we were all pretty confident, and we were confident in what we were doing. And Ronnie had confidence in us as well, which is a big thing. And I think that spurred us on, you know, because we did some incredible shows. I mean, yeah. and we had like how many of those songs were on there? Were in the set about four of them, weren't there? It seemed like you played a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, guys were, you guys are playing two-hour shows, so you're playing songs off this record, but then you're also playing, you know, Dio's hits and some Sabbath is and Rain. Uh, uh, you know, uh, as well. So, yeah, they were they were like we were doing the medleys too. You know, where there were four or five rainbow songs all together, and then three or four Black Sabbath songs were all you know uh, medley stuff. And then we were putting the new songs from this album. So it it was a long set, but it was uh, it was pretty enjoyable. 
Let's talk about some more of these songs. Born on the Sun. What do you guys remember about that? Uh, J Jimmy Bain riff. Yeah, it's. I think it turned out okay. When I, I must admit that song is you mentioning that I wasn't sure about that song when we first started doing it and stuff and all, uh, but it did develop into into a pretty good uh, song, pretty strong song. Uh, hey Angel, which is also which which I think is a great song and was also a video and single. What do you guys remember about that? Um. I think we did the video. We were on the road already, or in production with the set when we wrote. Uh, when we, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was just before we went out on the road. I think we had the whole setup for the set setup. Yeah. Set up. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. The, I remember the director coming up, and uh, because I was up on a riser with with Jens, we were next to each other on this very tall riser. Must have been about 12, 14 feet high, and. <clears throat> the director was having a problem getting a getting a shot across Jens and and capturing me as well, one of those side shots. And he says he comes up and he goes, Simon, would you mind moving your door back about two feet while you you know while you're playing? I'm going, Oh no, I can't really do that and play. <laughs> I, I can pre pretend to play. <laughs> you de it was definitely an unusual stage show. I mean, your your drums were like you said, way up in the air, and then you had the keyboards right next to you, uh, up of the air also, and then you had steps to come around, and you got a, a, a cage right underneath that opens and closes. I mean, it was quite the stage show. Yeah, so, there was a video that was a, a screen that the images were shot onto, like the beginning of um, the song Lock Up the Wolves would be, uh, an image would be put on there, and... Uh, it's pretty cool, and then the, they had, it had like gates, and the gates would open slowly. You know, it's like the gates of hell, I suppose. Uh, but it it was fun being up on that riser with Jens. You know, he, he there would be some funny noises coming up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you, do you remember when um, Jens got blown up? Yeah. Okay, you tell you tell the story, Rob. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, he. We used to have a bit in the set where the keyboard would uh, maybe doing the keyboard solo up on the up on the um, <laughs> riser, and then he'd run down into the middle of the stage, down the steps, and then the keyboard would come down out on the lighting rig, and he played this one. Yeah. And then he'd and then he'd start playing quicker, and he'd press a button, and the sound would like ooh, go up like this, and he'd be playing quicker, and then the smoke would pour out of the keyboard, like he was burning the keyboard up as he played faster and faster and smoke and then he'd jump away from it the keyboard would go up in the air and explode is a and big one, smoke. yeah and one time i guess something happened and it, it just exploded in his face and he, it knocks him about like god probably fit like 10 feet or something yep <laughs> there's a lot of spinal tap type stuff in this uh, set <laughs> yeah but anyway, we were really worried, weren't we? Because he, 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 he disappeared for a few songs and we thought that he was really hurt. But then he came back and he had ringing in his ears for like two weeks and he was really pissed off about it, as you yeah. can imagine. Yeah, he could have to keep his name. hurt himself on that. He got to keep his name, though. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> uh, okay, Between Two Hearts. Uh, that was written in the studio. That's the that's the reason we had to set up the drums and you came back in to do one more song, Sai. So. Oh. We did? Oh. Yeah, because because Teddy Teddy played the drums after you left. He played the drums when we wrote it. We just and then then and then you had to come back in and, and record it. Just to oh, it yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Just just real quick. Yeah. Yeah. But thankfully, it was all it was all kind of set up, not the kit, but the mics and everything was still there and the oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then night music. Uh, I think it came from a keyboard riff that either Ronnie or Claude had. Before I remember about that one. Yeah, the title track "Lock Up the Wolves," which you guys played early in the, each of the sets. A lot Ronnie's of these riff. were already written and already done by the time i got there jason so rowan had know better about him yeah that was a that was ronnie's riff 
Did, did, did Ronnie play any guitar or how did he do it? Yeah, he just came in and he sat down. He's like, check this out. Go. No, 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 no. Cause he How cool. Little guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one, Evil on Queen Street. Is it true that he got the name from a sandwich in a Toronto restaurant? Yeah. When the when I guess Dio were doing much music. Much so music. he's in, they like an MTV Canadian. MTV. Yeah, in Canada. Yeah. 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 So he went into a restaurant and they had a sandwich called the Evil on Queen Street. Yep. Rowan's not. Rowan's not giving very much. Oh no, that's All absolutely right. true. I, that's what, all kind, I can say. what kind of sandwich was it? There you uh, go, Simon. It was, evil. it was an evil one from the gotcha. street. <laughs> I've turned Simon into Ed McMahon over here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, what kind of sandwich was it? <laughs> ho ho! <a> sandwich. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, all right, walk, walk on water. You betcha. <laughs> Every day. No, sorry. <laughs> Rowan, tell us about Walk on Water. Um, yeah. uh, I can't remember much about that, to be honest. Twisted? Uh, I, Twisted? Uh, I, wanted that, I wanted that to be like an ACDC song. In my mind, that was ACDC. It doesn't sound anything like ACDC. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, why are they watching me? Um, Good question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, interview. Uh, yeah, we're this this. What do you call this again, Jason? Wasting time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right well, now, people are while they're watching me. People are glued to the screen, though, waiting. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ronnie came in with that title, and and I was thinking of it as like a Judas Priest kind of thing, you know, breaking the law kind of thing. All right, and then last one on this version is my eyes. Yep, that was uh, the quiet one on the album, acoustic beginning. Then it kicks in. Yeah. He's looking, uh, 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 amazing. He's done a lot, obviously he's done a lot of amazing lyrics. It's really cool how he incorporates all the songs that uh, he's played over the years and put them into uh, that sentence. A big song. Yeah. Big, big song. It's amazing. Right, this. this is a poster that was made to promote the release of the album. No, it, 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 there's amazing lyrics on that album. Totally. That, especially that song's beautiful. I know. Yeah, there's a the poster. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so I should point out that this record gets re-released quite often, and there's a version, there was a 2016 remaster, and... There's a, a version out now that has, um, I believe it's four uh, four pieces of vinyl, a rec you know, record set that's out now. You guys uh, see any of that? I I saw something, yeah. I saw, um, I think that, that second release you, you were talking about, I think I've, I've seen. I think that got sent to me. Um, you guys are obviously not getting rich on it because you're not selling it very well. <laughs> well... Uh, are we supposed to sell it? I I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no, I don't think it's. I think it's that people want. They want. Rowan just pretended his, his. I've lost sound. I can't hear anything. It'll be good. I didn't even I ask him. Anything controversial. <laughs> he knows. He was prepared. Rowan said, "If things get too heated, I'm just going to log log out." <laughs> okay, so let's look at. Uh, Let's look at some more uh, memories here, because that's really the whole point of this. We don't have to sell the record. People know about it. Look at this T-shirt right here. You guys got one of these? No, I don't think I don't think I ever had one of those. I had one with the album cover on the front. We used to never. All these bands I've been in, you very rarely that you get T-shirts. Yeah, it's weird. No, it's true. You know, it but goes marching cool. out be a collectible by now right probably i'm sure it listen i probably got this picture of ebay what is rowan doing by the way now rowan is none more black now he logged out you see okay he's he, he, i'm sure he'll, <laughs> i'm sure he'll be, i thought he was bluffing but i'm sure he'll be back <laughs> did you piss him off or something i don't know what's going i don't on. think so I, I, great I, here <laughs> i thought someone i 
I was worried about asking him some of the early stuff, but he, he seemed okay. There he is. He's back. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what right. with my phone. We, so we, did you, we, we were looking at the T-shirt. Did you like that T-shirt? Oh, uh, yeah. You sure? <laughs> it was one of the – it was, yeah. Um, have I disappeared again? Oh, yeah. I've actually got that T-shirt. See? Oh, yeah. you got one. I didn't. Ah. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, someone gave me that like two years ago. Nice. That's the good thing about having people, you know, look out for you. They bring these things. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> We're making you work for your money, Jason. Yes. Well, you know what happens? Usually you guys just chat away and then I can look for things. But <laughs> all of a sudden the cat's got your tongue. Chatting? Who? <laughs> 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 You know, I, I'm going to I'm going to say it for you guys, you guys are two of the best at your fields. Uh, you know, Simon, you're an amazing drummer and a great person. And same with Rowan, you're an amazing guitar player. You guys are both very modest. But uh, if you see these guys play and they're both still playing, you know, uh, well, when the world opens, they'll be playing. You'll, you'll see that they're uh, great at what they do. And uh, and they both performed with me, which was the low light of their career. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you a story. One night I'm on stage. Over it. We're still getting over it, Jason. Mm -hmm. One night I'm on stage it's playing like with Rowan, and I was meeting up again after the, all this. It's, it's like therapy for you, isn't it? Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I was on stage with Rowan playing one night, and I was just feeling the music, and I I was just maybe three or four frets off. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> but I kept playing. It sounded good to me, and Next Rowan time. just looked at me with the most puzzled face, like he he was. He was trying to figure out what key I had invented. Next time. <laughs> yeah. But he was trying to figure out how to transpose to me. That's the amazing musician he is. He was trying to make something out of it. Always a giver. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> all right, so look, so you guys go on the road and uh, you played a lot of shows. I see there's a lot of them on YouTube. You can see a lot of the, uh, the bootlegs and things. And, and then you played some large festivals, obviously. Well, yeah, Simon. Simon, so obviously, I mean, you you do that practically every year, though, don't you, Si? No. Well, I used to, but now and again. With COVID. But we did do some. We did that. What did we do? Like Mannheim, and it was Metallica and Bonham and and, and us. Yeah. That yeah. was a highlight of that tour, I think. And I think there yeah. was a couple others, but I, the Mannheim sticks in my mind. Yeah, I've got that poster actually. I've got that poster in the room. Uh, White Snake. Aerosmith, um, yeah, Bonham. Meta oh no, we supported Metallica, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, because they came up, they came down, said hello, and uh, you know, said hi and stuff. And but uh, unfortunately, Jason's band got a lot of. There was a lot of hate for his band, if I remember right. A lot There's of Bonham. Yeah, there a lot of cans being thrown on stage at him and Ooh, stuff. Really? Yeah, wow. so I don't remember that. I remember what, yeah. You remember them throwing cans on the stage at Jason then? That's what I remember, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was um, pretty horrible. You know? That was but one time. Go ahead, Rowan. Well, I just, I remember one time, Simon, you were standing at the side of the stage after we'd played and we were watching um, Metallica from side of the stage and we had that big pyro. And yeah. you had a beer in one hand and a cigarette in, in this hand. <laughs> How unusual. <laughs> How unusual. No way, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and the pyro. <laughs> I'm like totally giggling here. And the wow! pyro went off. The pyro went off. And your beer shot in the air. And your, your cigarette shot over your head. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that funny. But... Well, okay. so... Um... <laughs> the, the, the end of that tour comes now. Word is that there was supposed to be another record the following year, the following May. The goal was to have a record out in 91. Is that true? That's one of those Chinese whispers things, really, as I remember it, because Ronnie was, I mean, Simon, you probably remember better than me, but he was thinking about going back to Sabbath halfway along the tour, wasn't he? It, it, he was. I mean, it, it was, uh, he got enticed by... Geezer came to a show and played with us, didn't he? He did Neon yeah. Night. I think it was Minneapolis or something like that, St. Louis. 
Mm-hmm. And, he uh, had to use the opening band's bass, right? Because Teddy Cook was a lefty. Is that right? Sorry, say again. I, I, I heard that he had to play the opening band's bass because Teddy was a lefty. Could be. Oh, I don't know. I, the opening sense. band was Cold Sweat, I think, right? Oh, yeah, Cold Sweat. Mark Ferrari, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it was in. It was kind of in the cards. It was being dangled in front of Ronnie and stuff and all. And um, you can't blame him. I mean, he, yeah. he, I didn't blame him one bit. I mean, it was a shame we couldn't carry on because we were getting really good as a band, all of us, you, you know, with getting really tight. And, uh, well, and it, it would have been cool to do another album with that lineup, but not to be, not to worry. I mean, Ronnie went off, did Black Sabbath and did a monster album. Oh, yeah. I was just yeah. One of the things I think with this record is I think people looking back now uh, get might get this record more. I think when it came out, maybe people were just waiting for Rainbow in the Dark again. And I think that it was something a little different. Yeah, I think it's the same with a lot of artists, you know, that that, that they they want to hear that again and again, you know, in a different way and again and again. But you can't just keep putting that out, you know. You you gotta, you've got new people, you've got new material, you've got a new stage show, you've grown a, you've grown one year older or two years older, you know. You can't just be that all the time, you know. And times were changing too, you know. Now we're going into nineteen ninety, you know, ninety one. Music's getting a little different. And yeah. maybe Ronnie felt that uh, you know Sabbath was going to hold an, a bigger audience than he than he was going to hold on his own. I don't know what what happened in the end. I mean, you know, with him, he, he did get iced away, and we, you know, I'm sure Ron feels the same as me. We don't blame him, but yeah, the musical climate was changing definitely. Grunge was sticking its head out there and stuff, and and a lot of things were changing all around it. The way people dressed, the you know, obviously listening to that kind of music, um, and all, the whole genre and stuff. And uh, it wasn't just hard for Ronnie; it was hard for a lot of bands at that time, you know, because music pretty much right across the board were being uh, 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 affected. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it affected so much that Rowan left it. <laughs> I know. He, he's just... Bad. He can't he's, handle that. Yeah. He's blackout, isn't it, over there? This is his... This is, he's protesting the... the, the or this is, is his tribute to Black Sabbath. Obviously, I'm talking too much. I'll just be quiet for a little while. <laughs> Thank God you're talking. You hear these answers <laughs> Rowan's given us? <laughs> you know... We'll see if he even says hello when he comes back. There he is. Rowan, are you still there? Where is he? We thought that was your tribute to Black Sabbath. You blacked out the screen. Black <laughs> The blackout. Rowan, before you leave again, I got to ask you, there's two songs that were unreleased. One is called Hell Wouldn't Take Her, and the other is called The River Between Us. Rumor is you're the only person to have recordings of those. Well, <clears throat> there was, it was one and a half songs because... <clears throat> River Between Us was an alternate chorus to one of the songs on the album, and Hell Wouldn't Take Her is a complete song, and I got it on Boombox recording. But out of I said I asked Wendy Dio, "Can we put this out?" And she said, "Quality is not good enough. Doesn't sound good." Well, go ahead so, and play it right now, Rowan. It's she. It's okay. A one and a two and a one. No, so but so tell us a little tell us a little about these songs that we're never gonna hear. <laughs> well, Are they good? Well that's it. You're never gonna hear it. <laughs> yes. So we have to we we have to you know there was a movie that Jerry Lewis made. I'm gonna teach you guys a little something. And the movie is Jerry Lewis plays a clown and he brings children to the concentration camps, uh, you know, uh, probably the gas chambers. And it's really, obviously sounds like ridiculous and made up, but this is what's considered a lost movie. You can't see this movie. And there's always different rumors about how much of it was finished and who has one. And supposedly Jerry Lewis, you know, locked it in a vault. So uh, I'm not saying that uh, these unreleased Dio songs are gonna be that <laughs> that exciting. Well, but, that, was a real, that was real uplifting, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. What a segue. But but my point Jerry, is people talk about it. <laughs> what did he say? What did you say? Sorry. Jerry Lewis did what? What was he thinking? <laughs> he did what? That's Simon's not- got a queen. Funny. Simon's got a queen thing going on. Everything's black except you see his face. You notice that? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's because it's getting dark. <laughs> yeah. I liked it. But my point is 
when I, so we're not going to hear it, Rowan. You're the closest person who who can you know unless we can all come by. Can we all swing by? Did Wendy say it's okay that we swing by the house? It's a busy night tonight. Mm -hmm. but, um, I would love people to hear it because I think it's a great song, but. <clears throat> I would never release something if Ronnie didn't want me to, and he's not here, so I don't so, feel right. What, is it a full band playing on the songs? Yep. Who's well, in the one band? song? The one song, yeah. Not me. It's, it's the it's the. Vinny, who is on it? Vinny, Jimmy, Claude. Hmm. Okay. So you have it, and if people want to swing by, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just you'll open your window. And uh, we'll take admission. Yeah, I, yeah we will take admission. Now you're talking. Yeah, we'll take admission. Because technically that's not a violation. I'm an expert on um, copyright and trademark law. And so that's no problem. And, well, we, and we're going we're gonna to make some money here. Yes, yes. But anyway, but it, so it wasn't meant to be, you know, okay, so we know that he goes back to Black Sabbath. Now, after Black Sabbath, he decides to make another Dio record. Rowan, were you ever uh, contacted? No. When is the I'm, last time that you spoke to Ronnie James Dio? Well, I sent him an email um, when he was sick, and he sent me a reply saying, you know, hoped I was well, and that, and that was the last time. Yeah. So, um, so a couple of things, though, on, on this track that we're on uh so he made a record with Vinny, and then simon came back and simon you were you stayed with dio until the end you made three albums studio albums and i believe two live albums yeah and toured with him for is it 16 years um it's about 14 years okay Thunder. But now yeah. there's a rumor he, he, and he there was a period where he went off and he did heaven and hell as well right that's right gotcha uh, now, there's a rumor, and, and Rowan, you can set this rumor straight also, is uh, that at one point Craig Goldie was injured and that they had contacted you about maybe filling in. True? Um, I don't remember that he was injured, but I was supposed to, to fill in on one, one gig, but it didn't happen, as I remember it, or a few gigs or something, yeah, but it never happened. Well, and the reason it didn't happen was September 11 occurred. Uh, yeah, that's how I remember it. Yeah. And so that shows where it can. Do you remember any of that, Simon? No, I don't remember us being on the road around September 11th. I think it we're was, all um, I came in to play with you guys for a little while, for, for about a week, when you were in um, a rehearsal studio in the Valley. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we weren't. There were, we, at, we were all at home when September 11th happened, I remember. I was helping Wendy out of a, a store and... I had missed the news in the morning and I didn't turn my radio on and the car going down there and I got maybe the, there were some the dates you know maybe there were some dates ahead because you remember no one was flying for a long time you know what I mean it was uh, uh could have been yeah it's it's a but, bit of a to be honest with you of I course mean, we're talking about old things but yeah. Rowan are you saying that you actually went in and jammed am I am I what sorry Jason. did you actually go and jam with the guys again yeah yeah. Simon, uh, you remember that? Vaguely. Sorry, Rowan. <laughs> Rowan, your big comeback, and Simon doesn't remember. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm off. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> now, now, look, we should, po we should point out <laughs> that... Oh. <laughs> oh, dang, I've got to move. Oh. How's that? <laughs> Look, we're getting, we're getting, Rowan, we're getting a tour. Simon's showing us how much better he has it than us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, oh. Let's take us to the West Wing, Simon. The West Wing. You got to you got to jog past the library. There's, uh, a, chi there's a chicken wing Rowan. and a West wing. <laughs> yeah. The, the reason that Rowan, uh, that Scott, uh, that Simon was late when, earlier was because he was adding an extension to his home. Yeah. yeah. I had, to, I had to walk from one end of the house to the other. It took me half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was going to have the butler do the interview. Yeah. yeah butler? Just... Toby. Toby. Toby Cook. Butler. Toby Butler. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, listen. So um, so I, I want to look at look, look how nice that is. Where are you oh, at? I know. He's in Cambridgeshire. 
how the other half live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Taylor, two cities, Robin. Yeah. I'm a Had Harry you Potter stayed with Dio, you would have that posh estate. I'm a Harry Potter world. <laughs> look at that. That does look nice, Sai. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, we can just see the sort of the, the turrets and the and the uh towers. Yeah. Yeah, the slaves in the dungeon and all the rest of it. Yeah. New house. A new vineyard. House. Yeah. This is, you guys thought you were going to hear old stories about Lock Up the Wolves, but these guys can't remember anything. So instead, you're seeing Castle Wright. <laughs> I got a cactus. Check this out. Me and Rowan are stuck here in Vegas. You know. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> nice stonework. Mm -hmm. Big cactus. Stonehenge. <laughs> Stonehenge, mate. Stonehenge. Now, so... Yeah, so it's I'm gonna rain it back in. It, it's funny with lock up the wolves, you know. I think we talked about it last time you talked to me, Jason. It's it, how it it sort of sits well in the catalog, you know, with all the when people when Dio fans go through the catalog, you know, there's no there's no new music coming out. So that that's that's what we we've, we've got. You know, they, they, I've had some really, really nice comments about what people think about that album. When it first came out, it kind of got a little bit put to one side and stuff, I think. But I think it turned, it's a pretty damn good, strong album. Well, and I think, like you said, people looking back yeah, and now, that's, that, you're not going to have, that's it, man. <laughs> You're not gonna have new deal music, what and I think, think people are rediscovering. Yeah. Getting. Yeah. But I think people are rediscovering this record through all these various printings and realizing that maybe they missed something really good the first time, or hearing it for, for the first time. I think it sits well in the catalog. You know, it's it's good that it's a good album, um, and and it's different, but it's still Ronnie. You know, it's. Still, his voice and stuff and all, and we we came in and I think we did a pretty strong job. So, yeah, that's absolutely now. So after this, uh, you know, Simon, you went on to play with a bunch of bands, including uh, you know that long stay with Dio, but you played with Rhino Bucket and you played with Jeff Tate. You know, we talked about this, so people want to see my interview with Simon at the end of this video. There's a link, and then you can watch me talking to Simon about ACDC and and his whole career. Um, and then Rowan, though you. Uh, you also went on. You, you had a record deal with Oni Logan from Lynch Mob, uh, and oh, that, record that was a while good out. album. That was such a strong album. Wow. What what yeah, happened? What happened, Rowan? With that, yeah, what'd album? you do, Rob? Yeah, what'd you do, Rowan? It, it took. It didn't come out for like ten years. It never came out. Oh, it's not out. No. <laughs> Rowan, do you have that too? I have that. Yeah. Okay. So let me get this straight. If the people at home want to come by your place, they put $10 <laughs> in the bucket, they drive yeah. up to the window, and then they could choose. They could have, no offense, Rowan, but I think you should play the record with Oni Logan first, and the Dio song should headline. That's just my thought. Oh, okay, well, that's fair. That's absolutely if fair. If you really want me to market for you, Rowan, I, I will. I think that's a good idea. I think we should be, we should be shooting for 20 bucks. Okay, 20. Head. Simon... Can you call Wendy and see if she will allow the hologram to perform these two unreleased songs? You see, the thing is, Rowan's done lots of albums. It's just never been released. <laughs> it's just never been released. Yeah. We're learning. One of these days. One of these days. He's One like a these. Jerry Lewis movie. Huh? You're like that Jerry Lewis movie that nobody could see, unfortunately. But <laughs> what about Mo Rowan? What about right Rivers along. Cuomo? Right. Why am I even here? I don't know. <laughs> Rivers Cuomo from Weezer approaches you, Rowan. What happened there? Did that come out? No, that, that was a, he was managing a group. He was managing a group. And I did, I did a Barry Squire audition in LA and I got this job for about three years with this group that he was managing. Can we hear that anywhere? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, why what don't you tell that? us? At my house. What was, right, that, we'll what was that project you did, Rowan, that was a little bit, was it the guys from Enigma? Oh, Vast, yeah, Vast. Vast, that was it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, John Crosby, yeah. He he, he made the one album, which was really good. 
and I auditioned for the tour and I did the tour with that album and then I recorded on the second album. That would have been around like late uh, 1990, uh, 1999, something like that. What was the second album called? It was called Music for People. Music for People, right. Yeah. Right. So they actually they released that one, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. So we don't have to come by for that. No, you right. don't have to come by for that. <laughs> but I can play it if you'd like. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I should point out, uh, Simon, you might not know this, but Rowan's got a YouTube channel, and he he teaches uh, some amazing riffs, oh, yeah. and yeah, no, he's doing I, all kinds of stuff, and he he's teaching people too, yeah. and you can so you you can go on there and get lessons um, from Rowan, and you can hear he tells better stories on there than he he saves yeah. the good stuff for his show. Yeah, yeah, it seems like doesn't it? I've seen that channel. Yeah, it's a, a brilliant playing. I mean, good God. Yeah, yeah. Not only can he remember the Dio songs, he plays them on that channel. He breaks out a guitar and he plays the riffs. What's the only <laughs> album I've ever, that's ever come out? <laughs> he, the cat got his tongue today, but when you go on that channel, he can't shut up. I guess when he has a guitar, he's more comfortable. All right. Must be. <laughs> I didn't know when we started this that we were going to pick on Rowan so much, but it just happened. Fuckers. Um, <laughs> But Rowan, and then you've been doing, you were doing Raining the Rock Vault here in Vegas for the last million years? Um, uh, we, I've been doing it for about five, uh, four, four years maybe, Raining the Rock Vault, yeah, with, um, with, with Howard and, and Hugh and... Uh, Howard you know, Lee from yeah, Park? Howard Lee. Hugh yeah, McDonald Howard. from Bon Jovi? Yeah, Hugh McDonald, um, Robin McCauley, um, Paul Shortino, Blas Elias, um, God, who else? Who else is in that show? You name uh, the people who matter. <laughs> Michael T. Ross. Yes. How can you forget? Um, um, Jay Shellen. Obviously, Doug Aldrich and Tracy Guns had, had done the gig previously. Yeah. But they upgraded to you, in my opinion. Well, very kind of you. What do you think Simon's doing, Rowan? He's like telling ghost Simon? stories up there. Look at Simon up there. He looks like he Ooh. should have a flashlight and tell us ghost stories. Ooh. This is when you guys woke up today. You didn't realize how much entertainment that you were going to bring the world. I feel like we're on like the Hollywood Squares right now. I should have done this live so people could ask oh, questions. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, so people could ask questions. But okay, so let's let me check my notes and make sure I got everything. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're going to recap. All right. When Simon was 18 years old, he answered an ad in a paper to audition for a band. They wanted a drummer who hits hard. He did not know he was auditioning for ACDC. They asked him to come back for a second audition, and he said he couldn't afford to get there. He, they helped him. He got there, and he found out he was going to be in ACDC. That's how that happened. It's an amazing story at 18 years old. Rowan Robertson was so full of himself as a kid that he just said, I'm going to send in a tape. He saw Craig Goldie play live, and he said, I could do that. And he sent in a tape. They didn't take him right away, so he sent in another tape. Do you have those tapes, by the way? Those would be no, collectible. No. Yeah, so we can't hear those. But so, and then Ronnie James Dio picked Rowan to be his guitar player, and uh, and so, and then Rowan and Simon met, made an amazing uh, a record together, and obviously a, still have a friendship to this day. Uh, you know, I've um, sorry, I've been um, playing with Les Warner lately. Oh, Les from the Cult. Yeah, and he said he was about like fifth in line for that gig you got or something like that because they were calling him back as well apparently yeah, for dc yeah yeah there was um there was a couple other guys involved too besides les the um the guy was in roxy music barry black is it i don't know yeah not andy newmark oh, yes. i don't know i don't know yeah that's the only other one i heard i did hear about les yeah 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 he yeah. said that he got the yeah so if you guys are watching, Rowan beat Gary. Got chosen. It wasn't my fault, you know. I mean, no, I no, no. But if you're paying, if you're scoring at home, Rowan passed Gary Hoey and Simon <laughs> passed Les Warner. So if you got, if you have your scorecards, yeah, you want to mark that down in their <laughs> in their credits. I think, by the way, guys, I think this was fun. I do these interviews almost every day of the week. I've, this is the first time I've chatted with somebody who's almost completely in the dark. But what what happened, Simon? They turned the power off in the castle? 
No, there's there's not much of a light going on out the back here. You don't have a candelabra? No. Well, he, he <laughs> candelabra. You know. He's got I, he's got his own faulty I, towel. Brother, your bed and breakfast. <laughs> don't mention the war, Sam. Yeah, we ran out of candles. <laughs> So yeah, he's got to send. He's got to send somebody. There he is. Now he's back to, to the Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry. But, but I do these interviews every day, and, and usually at the end of the interview, I go, "Boy, that was terrible. I, I I just couldn't get anything out of the people." But in this case, you guys are funny. There's obviously a history between you two, and I know that you know in both of your careers, you've told these stories a lot, and so I think that hopefully people uh, in, in, were entertained. Listen, no one's got anything to do. We're all sitting at home. Yeah. yeah. Me and Rowan went through an adventure together. We were on the road and stuff, and we recorded and all. And whenever we run into each other, it's um, it's always it's always good, you know. Yeah. Old so now, stuff. Simon, tell tell us what you when when the things go back to normal. What is the band that you're working with? Well, uh, number one on the list is 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 the hologram. Right. that we did Ronnie, which is deal returns we had dates booked for for last year which you know were, were you know were cancelled so we're waiting for that to get up and running when we can um you know last year too i had gigs booked in australia in italy and germany and even norway and all that got cancelled so that'll pick up again once we figure out how the hell to do it yeah and you're recording now right I finished recording, but I just I just did a couple of albums with a couple of friends, my friend Stuart Smith, um, and uh, another friend of mine, Kevin Singer. He has a band called Of Gods and Monsters. Mm -hmm. We did that with Ira, Ira Black, and Bjorn England. So uh, that's that's sounding pretty good. They both are, you know, but they'll they'll be coming out at different times, different formats and stuff. But, yeah, uh, it's it's good that you've been able to stay busy. Now, yeah. Rowan, uh, Rowan, I don't know. Maybe you feel like me. I'm jealous that Simon gets to play with a hologram because I've toured with such jerks in my life that you know a hologram at the end of the night you f you fold it up. A hologram doesn't get on the Southwest flight and then tell the people to announce that he's on the plane. You know what I mean? He, he doesn't cut across handicap people to board first. The the hologram just is you know. I mean, he probably has a rider, but you know. What do you think, Rowan? I think that's. I think they're going to in, introduce those features on the next hologram tour to make it more lifelike. <laughs> right. I think it's great, though. I, I, you know, Rowan, what do you think of the hologram? Oh, I saw it. I thought it was awesome. It was killer. Yeah. I saw it in um, in uh, uh, LA. It was, it was a killer show. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's great. The fans, you know. I mean, I know some people yeah. argue, but you know what? It, it, this is what you, you're lucky that you get to see this. Yeah, well, a lot of people ne never got to see Ronnie. Yeah. I think if we go out again with it, we're going to bring in more, uh, more um, real footage of him. You know, like Wendy has a whole bunch of different, um, you know, from like backstage and on the bus and him talking to fans. So we'll do a big section of it in the, in the production there. It should be pretty, pretty cool because people, you know, the the love that goes out is amazing. You know, it really is. It's hardcore too. You know, it's, it's hard to stop. You know, so it's one hundred percent, yeah. And Rowan, so tell us a little bit about what you're up to as well, and what where people can find you. Um, obviously, I've got my YouTube channel, um, Rowan Robinson Official. Like and subscribe, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, then, I've, as I said, I've been working on this project with Les Warner. We should have songs out, three songs out by mid. March actually, so not too long now, and um, I'm working on a couple other projects as well. But that'll be the first one out, and then also I'm working on oh, yeah, that's nice right. DC4, yeah. which this is available at my house at the gigs that we're going to be charging for, right? So you're not making music, you're just doing pottery. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this one's not dry yet, yeah, yeah. creative too. That's amazing, yeah. So, uh, so people can actually, people can stop by and listen to the songs yeah. and then pick that up. Yeah, and, stop and, by the songs, buy buy some merch from me. And uh, actually, we're on the same label, uh, Simon, as your um, Gods and Monsters. We just we just hooked up with them. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. 
Yes. What uh, label's that? I don't even know the label. Um, I can't remember <laughs> the name. <laughs> don't that, worry, Rowan. It's not coming out anyway. So <laughs> that's right. Another reason to come to my house. Label. <laughs> No, but DC4 is Jeff Duncan from uh, Armored Saint, and his brother Sean Duncan is in the band as well. Yeah, who are all just complete badasses on their instruments, yep. and Matt Duncan as well. Oh, there's, an, there's another Duncan, okay. Yeah, there's three of them. I'm the Great fourth. band. Great band. Yeah. Okay, so well, cool. I hope that people would check that out, and uh, and hopefully sooner than later we'll all be back and, and, and doing things, you know? It's, I. Sounds like numbers are getting better in places, and so let's hope. Uh, yeah, let's hope we all get back to work, and you guys and we can chat in person. Because you, as you guys know, the stories I tell are way crazier when we're not being watched by other people. I was wondering where you were going to go with this, and I thought oh, I don't want to be involved in any of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, this is I do a much kinder, gentler, like PC thing. Yeah, but when <laughs> I start. <laughs> I should have an after show, though, because whenever I stop recording, whoever I'm interviewing at the time, we then just make fun of everyone else. You know, it's uh, the outtakes. People can stop by my house and hear it. All well, right. Well, you. listen. Bye. Bye, Jason. This is where we thank everyone for watching. They can thank check you guys, you guys out and, uh, and check out Lock at the Bull still. Hear a great record that you might have missed. All right, guys? Bye, guys. Thank you See so you. much. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Cheers, Rowan. Hey, see you, Ty.